All right. Well, good morning again, everybody. Thanks for being here at our first presentation of our learning program, learning communities and special programs. I want to welcome all of you. Um, thanks for being here again. My name is Mr. David, Alan David from Chabot College, and I'm one of the outreach specialists uh, at the college. And I'm here really just to help um, bring our different programs to you. And so you could learn about what you could possibly join, or maybe you know somebody who might wanna join one of these programs when you get to Chabot. What I like to tell students usually is, um, when I was you know, your age back in the days, <laughs> right? Um, I didn't know about different programs. And, and in, in all honesty, I didn't have a Miss Suki. I didn't have one of the counselors like at your, your home schools, or I did have a counselor, but I learned to avoid them. I, I thought that talking to a counselor is when you're in trouble, right? Like you had to get your grades up or something, or, um, or maybe you were a super <clears throat> duper student who's gonna go to like Berkeley or something, right? And I was not one or the other. And so I was like, what's the point of me joining a counselor? And then maybe my, my pride made me think that, oh, I don't need help. I could just figure this on my own. And when I was a Chabot student, I didn't have any of these presentations from folks who are in the room today and in, in our future weeks to let me know what was there. I, I didn't know about it. We didn't have Zoom. You had to walk by to even know about the programs, right? And so I actually took way longer at Chabot to transfer. I, I didn't even do financial aid. So what we're trying to do at Chabot now, and mostly that was my fault, you know, the staff, mm -hmm we're trying to reach out to us, but I thought I could do it on my own. But in reality, I should have asked for help. And what we're trying to do is let you know about all the different types of support that we have. And you know, in all honesty, we can't even go over all of the support we have. That's why we had to separate these things into multiple weeks. Um, so what I wanted to just let you all know, and I hope you take it, is we're here as a community, we're here to back you up. And if there's different types of support that you need, feel free to you know, reach out to me, Ms. Suki, or your counselor at your home school, or one of these program <laughs> representatives. Sorry, that was my little soapbox there. But um, anyhow, um, let me have my um, colleagues introduce themselves. Um, and Roberto, how about you introduce yourself first? Well, Hi guys, Roberto Mendez. I'm the director of TRIO Aspire and Excel. I've been at Chabot College for over 17 years, working and helping students move from one level to another level. Um, and I concur with Alan. Alan um, says, I mean, trying to, the first thing that we need to do, and it's hard, is to be able to ask for assistance. Sometimes we do not have a bigger brother that's gone on to college or a bigger sister that's gone on to college. And it's, a, and it's, it's up to us to be able to reach out, to be able to get support, to make sure we have all the information we need to make the next moves. So um, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit of TRIO, but let me, let's move over to Nathaniel. Good morning. I'm Nathaniel Rice. I'm the director of the Disabled Students Programs and Services Accessibility Center for Education, or we can just also go by ACE. Um, and we are here to help any student with any kind of documented disability. Oftentimes, this might be from an IEP or a 504 plan from high school. Or if you don't have one of those, there's numerous other ways where you can be verified for services as well. Some of the most common services, well, I'll get into that later, but um, I also assist with some of the tech around campus. And so I'm going to be making a plug for a new campus app during my presentation as well. Pass it on to Ying Ying. Hi, everyone. I'm a mentor from the TRIO program, and I am the first generation to study in a college, and I don't know about anything that the college provides or resources. Luckily, I found a support system in the clubs and trio system. So um, I will talk about my experience later for how I navigated my transfer process through the help of from my peers and the members from, from trio and from the counselors. Uh, 
I muted myself. But yeah, thank you, Ying Ying and Roberto and Nathaniel for the quick introductions. And yes, welcome again to all the students who are in the room or entering the room. Um, a quick, another quick plug before we get the, our presentations going. Um, I wanted you to all know if you didn't know already about our SOAR program. And I'm gonna share the link with your, with Miss um, Suki and your counselors there. But I just wanna show you again quickly, if you didn't know about it, about our SOAR page on the Chabot website. So if you're at the Chabot webpage, let's just say you're at the homepage. Is it loading? We'll edit all this 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 um, time out while we're loading the screen. But anyhow, um, if you search for SOAR on the top right corner of our Chabot uh, website, it's S O A R, like this right here. It'll bring you to the steps that you need to become a Chabot student, right? And um, here's a quick video. We're not going to go through it right now, but. We have some of our peer guides at Chabot talk about the different SOAR steps and the process and even a little bit about our programs that we're talking about today. Um, and if you want, you could print out these steps. But the good thing is to always return to this website. And as you could see, oh, now it loads. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, here, follow me as I go to the SOAR page. Again, so if you search for SOAR, you'll have um, the search results here. You could click on any one of these steps. I mean, not the first two options. And again, you'll see a video with an introduction from our student peers. But I wanted you to all to know about all these steps that we want you to complete to become a, show, a Chabot student. Technically, all you need to do is step one, but if you want to get, um, possibly your first year free and maybe even more. And if you want to get um, your classes before everyone else where you could register before everyone else and choose a schedule that, that fits you more and, and get supports along the way to become a Chabot student, that's why we want you to complete these steps, okay? Um, so just start at step one and apply as soon as you um, get home today, or if you have time after this presentation, okay? And, and this website is good because any updates to any of these steps will happen live right on the webpage, right? Instead of printing it, you might have a copy and then something might change on a date and um, you'll have the wrong date, right? So always return to this website. And if you, have, um, if you need help, Let's look at step one. If you need help, you could always click on this for assistance, contact a peer guide. And what it'll do is it'll bring you to this part of our webpage where you get different types of support from Chabot, right? So if you need to call in on your phone and you're having trouble with one of the steps, you could call one of our peer guides at this phone number between these hours and days. Um, or you could log on to our online chat Monday through Thursday, nine through five. So you could do it maybe on a minimum day if you have classes. And we also have bilingual support, but they support even students who, you know, any student. They support any student at El Centro and they have their hours as well. So you have all these different options to get support on the SOAR steps, okay? So I just wanted you all to know about that because I know there's a bunch of seniors in the room and um, wanted to let you know that you always have support here at Chabot, even on the SOAR and application steps. Okay, so now we're gonna head into our program presentations. And again, we have TRIO and DSPS here today. So our first um, sub presentation is gonna be Roberto and Ying Ying talking about our different TRIO programs. I think I should unmute myself. So once again, Roberto Mendez, um, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna share a couple of things in regarding to um, TRIO programs. Um, 
TRIO is a student support services. Most people understand if you're an ROP right now, if you're at your high schools, you might have heard of Educational Talent Search. That is also a program that's currently in the Hayward area and um, provides academic support, provides guidance to go on to college. Well, that similar program is what Student Support Services, TRIO, Aspire, and Excel is at, at Chabot College. So what is the program? It's a four-year federally funded program recognized in the U.S. as a student support services known as Aspire, Excel. That's how we identify as Chabot. What do we do? Why, is, why are we there? We can help you to accomplish your college goals, navigate academic career for natural questions, explore personal concerns and assist you with community resources and expand your opportunities. One thing that you, uh, you would see is that the TRIO students become a TRIO family. We provide round around support for students for their success. Let's meet the team. There's me, Roberto Mendez. We have a counselor assistant, program assistant, Osabisa. We actually even have an ESL faculty member if you needed support for English to improve your English. Um, we have four counselors that provide detailed academic support, student educational planning, tutoring support, filling out the financial aid. When you apply to register for transferring to a university, make sure that you get everything done and processes everything with you to be successful. This is, I put this picture on because this is a great person that I would like you guys to meet. And his name is Ingrid. She is our ESL instructor that provides English support across the board for all of our students. So again, we not only have English, we're currently working on trying to access our math instructor to be able to connect with students. But again, this is um, something that we provide a much more round-to-round -round support to our, to our program students. Now, one thing that we have that is very unique at Chabot College, we have a galore of mentors and support that are student-driven. As you can see, we have what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, mentors. And these mentors are very unique individuals. These individuals have been at Chabot College, have participated in our program for a while. And guess what? They're about to move on. They're about to transfer. They're about to succeed out of Chabot College. And these students really provide unique support to our participants. But I asked Ms. Ying Ying to be a part of this today because, you know, I'm an administrator and I guess I'm over 55 years old. I am an OD, but goody. Um, and sometimes talking to a fellow student provides you a much more unique perspective on how Chabot College Trio program is and Chabot College is. So I'm going to ask Ying Ying to do her little quick presentation, and then we'll uh, then we'll continue on. Stop share. Thank you, Mr. Mendes. And. Um, Yes, I have been with tri TRIO since 2020. And at first, I was just like the idea that TRIO can provide me various resources, such as priority registration that can help me get into the class easier and earlier. But later, I really found a support system in TRIO that has helped me navigating my transfer process to a four-year university because I myself, I'm a first generation and I don't know much about campus resources, but with the help from the counselor in trail, I have finished my G requirement classes and my transferring process at this point. So it, what I'm saying is with the help from trail, I really navigated my process much easier than if I had figured it out by myself. And the trail counselor, like whenever I have questions, they provide answers and suggestions. That's what I like the most. And I became very clingy. I basically meet them every week for 
all kinds of questions because I like to get um, advice and suggestion before I make decisions. Whatever is about financial aid, my classes, or um, even life related, it's good to get advice. That's the first thing I like about Trail. And then the second thing, as uh, Mr. Menders mentioned that we have um, trio mentors, that all the mentors will have walked through all kinds of programs like such as me. Um, I, ha I have walked through the transfer process to UC. So I have experience about how the process look like and what is important, what's the key point. So I can provide the, my experience to um, the members from to other members in TRIO. And then finally, we have all kinds of events that provide within TRIO, like um, in every semester, like uh, the composition sections and that how we can connect with the members within TRIO. Is, it is very important to talk to other students and socialize because sometimes we need information and tips for choosing classes and other members might have that. So this is my personal experience with TRIO and I really found a support system uh, with the TRIO family and I hope you join it and share my experience. Thank you. Thank you, Ying Ying. So one thing that is very unique and different from our TRIO program to finish off is that we, um, a student can only be a member of TRIO Aspire and Excel as, as soon as they register for classes. So this is a um, flyer that I'm gonna forward to Alan and Alan, you can forward to um, Suki so that way she can have that. This is a way to contact me as soon as you get through the process of SOAR or registering for classes, we can work through and, and process and assist you and getting you enrolled and getting provided you all support and services. Um, once again, this um, take your time understanding what you wanna do, um, and the pathway that you need, um, make sure that you ask a bunch of questions uh, because that's the only way you're gonna be able to find out um, what you need to do and where you need to go. Is your book college the place for you? For us, it is because we're here to provide you the steps to move forward. Um, we're the only local one that has a student support services program in the area. Most of the other community colleges do not. We have three. We not only have our regular SSS, which is Aspire, we have an English language learner program, which is Excel. And then we also have a STEM um, trio program that provides extra support if you wanna go into the math and science area. So look at some of the information and digest it, figure out what is the best pathways for you to go and see. We have open arms here at our trio programs and we're willing to provide the support and resources you need to make the next move. Currently, 94% of our students transfer very quickly and we've transferred students to UC Berkeley, UCLA, USC, and most of the major institutions in California. So we have a very good, strong track record. If you really want to transfer, I always tell, I always say, TRIO is a program for you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Roberto and Ying Ying, for speaking about TRIO. Before we transition to DSPS and Nathaniel, um, can you just kind of reiterate what, what does first generation mean? You know, because that is one of the requirements to be in your program. I know it was listed there, but, but just for students to have an understanding of what first generation means in, in a college context. Perfect. First generation under the federal guidelines is very specific. A student that is the first in their family to be able to receive a bachelor's degree, a BA in the United States. Now, we have international students or students that are from other countries that parents 
might have gotten a degree outside of the country, Mexico, um, China, wherever it is. Um, but under the eyes of the federal government, those degrees are not validated in the United States. So if they don't have validation, then technically their um, children are still first generation in the United States being able to get a bachelor's degree. If a parent receives a certificate, if a parent receives an associate degree, again, the federal go government states that they must have received a bachelor's degree in the United States, and that will not make their, student, their, their kids um, um, first generation. So that's the, the regulation in the format of definition of what the federal government says a first generation. Now, the other one is low income. Low income based on the federal guidelines of the federal government is a student that has um, income necessities, but qualifies under financial aid. So if you qualified under the financial aid Pell Grant um, program, then you are be considered a low income student. Now, if you do not apply for the financial aid, there are specific ways that we can find that out, but um, those are the federal government identifies and puts a definition on the on the labels. Yeah, thanks for that detail, Roberto. Let me let me ask you uh, all who are on the line there at ROP, if you could put your hands up. How many of you are the first in your family to go to college? How about um, the first in your family to maybe get a bachelor's degree or, or maybe that's one of your goals. What, how many of you would be the first getting a degree in your, in your family? Okay, so possibly if you're under the definitions of a low income and the first in your family to be entering college, TRIO might be one of the programs for you. So when you get to Chabot, seek them out, okay? Um, and if you don't know how to get to them, message me and I'll go walk you over there. <laughs> Um, all right, so thank you again, Roberto and Ying Ying. Now let's talk about DSPS and ACE and some other things because Nathaniel is um, so plugged into different things at Chabot College. I reach out to him for a bunch of things too. So, um, but yes, Nathaniel, could you introduce yourself and your program and, and let us know more about the programs you represent? Thank you, Dave, Alan. Uh, so yeah, once again, I'm Nathaniel Rice. I'm the director of DSPS ACE, Disabled Students Programs and Services Accessibility Center for Education. That's a big mouthful. Um, and uh, before we get started, I just want to re reiterate, sorry, over the next few weeks, you're going to have presentations from a number of special programs. And you don't have to pick one special program. You can be a part of multiple special programs. And oftentimes we will work together and support you in different ways. So don't just pick one and think you're done. You know, Go for everything that you fit for. Everything will work together to support you. Uh, there's a whole team of people across the campus to help you. Uh, okay, so let me get started here. I'm gonna start off my slide screen share. Okay, everybody should see a nice bright yellow sunflower now. So this is a presentation for high school outreach and I wanna start off with something new. Uh, if it might be a little hard on your screens, but um, these are QR codes. If anybody wants to run up and scan the screen with their phone, we have Android on the left and Apple iOS on the right. This is for a pretty new uh, campus specific app that we have. This is not just DSPS, this is for all students. I'm just highlighting it because I was part of helping get it started. If you can't get to your screen to scan the QR code, you can also go to the website, shabocollege.edu slash go app, or you can just look for it in your uh, phone store under Chabot Go. So this app is like bringing the services of the campus into the palm of your hands. It's going to give you connections, phone numbers, emails, information on all the different services that the campus offer, offers. It's going to give you hours. It's going to have a 3D map in there. Um, and there's more being built into it all the time. So I highly recommend if you are planning to come to Chabot, 
that you download this app, check it out, and it will help you to get connected and be informed. Okay, so that's with my tech hat on. Now I'm going back to my DSPS hat. Uh, so we have a team of, I think, about 14 people here in DSPS, three full-time counselors, Linda, Felicia, and Dennis, and our, our part-time counselor, Debbie, and our staff, myself, Renato, who does alternative testing, Will does rides around campus in our super fancy special golf cart, Shauna, who does uh, interpreting needs and filing services, Thomas, who does our alternate media. We're going to have a new counselor assistant to work our front desk um, next month. Steve Soroy is our adaptive PE coach, Heather and Joshua, who are learning skills faculty, and Lisa, who is our instructional assistant. So this is the team at DSPS to support you, to make sure that you have all that you need to be successful and every opportunity. And this is for students with an IEP, a 504, or any other kind of documented disability, or uh, for individuals that think they might have a learning disability but have not been tested. Uh, we'll have more on that later. We have a class to test for that. ACE is our building. DSPS is the program. ACE is Accessibility Center for Education. Uh, when you join ACE, you get access to a lot of special tools and services. Uh, it was mentioned earlier about priority registration. Students in DSPS are in the very first group that can register for classes. It's a little less important at the very beginning, but it's super important towards the end of your college career because the classes that you need are often impacted, meaning they can be hard to get into. So being in the first group to register can be very important. Uh, we also have specialized computers, uh, we have adjustable tables in the center, special software, all kinds of good stuff. I mentioned the learning skills program. The learning skills is support. So at the college level, we don't have special education, but we do have educational assistance classes. So these are classes that can be taken individually or along with uh, transferable classes. So the Learning Skills 116 is the assessment class. And then the 117 through 121 are foundational and support classes. Everything from reading, writing, math, problem solving, study strategies, and quantitative strategies. We also have two non-credit options, Learning Skills 217 and 219, which are mirrors of 117 and 119. And non-credit means you don't pay for it, but you also don't get the units, the credits for it. So oftentimes students that might want to take classes more than once to reinforce their skills might register for one of the non-credit classes. The other classes we offer are adaptive PE. We have a state-of-the-art gym. Uh, a couple years ago, we invested a couple hundred thousand dollars in new equipment. So it's a really nice uh, facility. We also have our computer application systems, which is actually going to be renamed to learning skills, uh, hopefully by fall 2022. So these are classes to assist with keyboarding, Microsoft Word, and Kurzweil. Uh, CAS 102 currently is, will be learning skills 102. Intro to assistive technology is actually our Kurzweil class. Kurzweil, if you've not heard of it, is a scan and read program. So you can scan any document, any textbook, and the, the software will read it back to you. The cool thing about using software to do this instead of like, you know, back when I was a student, uh, there were books on tape. Um, but when you use technology, you can change the reading voice, the reading speed, you can change the foreground and background colors, and all those things will help you do better in your classes. They've done a lot of studies. This is called multimodal learning where you see something and hear something at the same time, it helps you retain the information better and you see the results when it's time to take your exams. When you see a DSPS uh, counselor, well, first off, you're going to apply to Cheville College. If you need to use accommodation services, you'll need to submit your documentation verification. Then we'll make an appointment for you to see a DSPS counselor. We will do everything a general counselor does, like creating an SCP, a student education plan, but we will also create an accommodation form, which is the accommodations that are appropriate for you at the college level. And this is determined based on previous accommodations you might have used, and through the interactive process of the counselor talking with you 
seeing what challenges you might have had and seeing what has worked in the past. And this can also be revised and updated if needed. You actually should see a DSPS counselor once a semester, minimum once a year, just so that we stay in touch and make sure that everything is, is good to go. Also want to highlight, we have an Able Disabled Club. It's very active. Uh, we do fundraising events, social events, um, events during the holidays for, uh, with gifts and Thanksgiving food. Uh, you know, as we are now coming out of COVID, all of this can resume. It's a great way to get connected and get plugged in at the campus environment. Uh, student groups in general are super important. Uh, one of the most important aspects of the community college education. Real quick, if you'd like to contact us, if you have any future questions, you can email us at cc-dsps at chabotcollege.edu, cc-dsps at chabotcollege.edu. Our phone number is 510-723-6725. And our website is chabotcollege.edu slash dsps. And we have more detailed information on the steps and processes on how to receive services, information about each of those services, such as extended time on testing and getting your textbooks in alternate formats so you can access them via your computer and a bunch of other information and tools and resources. So please check out the website. And I will just leave you once again with the screen on the Shibogo app. Please check it out, download, and give us feedback on what you think about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nathaniel. Um, quick question before we open it up to all the students. Can can you restate like um, you know what what kind of um, what qualifies a student or what 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 do they need to what situations do they have to be in to be able to join um, DSPS or get the services um, offered by DSPS and ACE? Can you state Absolutely. that again? So. If you're coming directly from high school, most often you will have either an IEP or a 504 plan, and that will be the basis of determining appropriate services at the college level. If, you know, by chance you don't have one of those, you could get accommodations through a letter from your doctor, uh, which states the nature of the challenge. Um, you can, share with us any medications that you might be taking. Um, you can take the Learning Skills 116 class, which will do an LD, which is a Learning Disability Diagnostic Assessment. Um, and there's some other ways you can come in and talk with us and we will walk you through it. Um, if you are interested perhaps in a family member, um, maybe a parent or an aunt, uncle, um, oftentimes for older students, they do not have all these things when they were in school, you know, like IP 504, disability and educational challenges weren't really talked about. So in those instances, it's good to talk with us directly, either email or phone. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of work through the, the situation, see what might be appropriate, whether that's a referral to the Learning Skills 116 class or something else. So every student's individual, we do have some set processes, but then each student's individual situation, we uh, you know, take a look at it and figure out what's gonna be best for that student. Yeah, Nathaniel, you mentioned like um, maybe some students might not know that they might have um, yeah. a disability of some sort. For example, I'm gonna I'm be real with everybody right now. I, I found out later on in life that I had, you know, I was dyslexic or I had a slight dyslexia, right? And if I, I didn't know that. So I tried to study in, in this way for so long. And some of those services that, that Nathaniel brought up where they could scan your text and help you read it, that would just have saved me so much time, right? And, um, and I, I, maybe I was too prideful to ask for help. So if a student was in that situation and like they think they might, right? Yeah. Have something and that's been, have, that it was, hard during high school for whatever reason, how would they um, come about talking to you or one of your staff about, you know, maybe getting support in that situation? So if there is something that is undiagnosed but suspected, um, so let me just say real quick, 
over 85% of the disabilities that we service are non-visible. So if you think about somebody in a wheelchair or somebody with a cane, somebody that's blind, somebody that um, can't hear, those are all visible disabilities that you can know right away this, this person has a challenge. But the vast majority of disabilities that we serve are non-visible. It's things like you said, uh, dyslexia. There's also dyscalculia, which is similar to dyslexia, but it's for math, where your numbers get mixed up. There is, um, you know, somebody could have psychological issues, uh, schizophrenia. There's, there's a number of issues that can be present. You know, it's not just for students that are blind or deaf or that are in a wheelchair that need services. Um, approximately 25% of the population of the entire world has a disability of some kind. Many of those disabilities would benefit from having an accommodation. Accommodation is not a wrong way to take college. It is using the services available to you to help you be successful. There is no reason not to utilize every service available. You know, just with like any of the other programs, OPS, where you might get free textbooks, there is no reason not to utilize a disability mm -hmm. accommodations. We are here to help you, give you every opportunity to be your best self. And if you think you might have a disability, a learning challenge, we will help you walk through that, determine if that is the case, and if so, provide the accommodations appropriate for that disability. I see your hand up, Roberto. Well, <laughs> yeah, I just want to throw something out. Um, you know, my daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, now she's 26 years old, she went to Chabot College um, for the first two and a half years. We discovered she had a disability in math and um, almost like reading dyslexia. Um, she was struggling so hard, but the services that were provided at the center made her transferred, graduated at the top of her class at Cal C uh, CSU Stanislaus in archeology, span and currently is moving on to UCLA master's program in conservation. So, I'm proof, that's proof of what um, Chabot College um, um, Disability Center is, or ACE Program Center is. She was struggling and wanted to quit college, and we just didn't know. And I've been in the educational system for so long, and I didn't know until I went into um, talking to the director. It wasn't Nathaniel at that time because it was quite a long time ago, but we had a discussion. I brought her in. And lo and behold, um, she started acing her classes. She transferred, completed it now, and you know is being successful on her path for education. Again, I'm going to reiterate what Alan and Nathaniel said. Sometimes we feel very embarrassed, but we have to be strong enough to ask for support. You know, mm -hmm. and as a father. As Alan was, uh, I was like, you know, uh, I didn't know where to find the answers. I thought I knew a lot of stuff. I didn't. And by knocking on doors, I was able to provide the support for my daughter to be successful. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. I'll just back that up with if there is a chance that you might benefit from accommodations, seeing us out sooner rather than later. So often I see students who with a challenge that might or might not have received services in high school and they want to, for whatever reason, try it without accommodations at college. And oftentimes they end up spinning their wheels their first year or so here. They're using up their financial aid, they're wasting their time, they're not passing classes that they could class, they could pass with the accommodations that they should be receiving. So always make sure and get connected with us if there is any chance that you might need our services. We can't help after the fact. If you had an IP but you don't connect with us, you take your first test and you fail the test because you didn't have enough time to complete it because of your disability, we can't help. We can only help prep things in advance. So even if 
you think you might not need our services, but you are eligible for them, get connected so that if you do need us, we're ready to go. Because if you come to us, like, you know, the day before your exam, we likely won't be able to get you processed in time to get accommodations in place for that exam. So come and see us sooner rather than later. Thank you for that information. And, and Roberto, thanks for sharing that, you know, testimony for your daughter, because um, I mean, honestly, uh, I didn't even let my colleagues know till this moment. So that, you know, about my situation, but I thought it was fitting because I'm like, I'm using those apps for myself um, through my own pocket though. Um, but, you know, let's, let's give you all there in the room an opportunity to ask questions. Are there any questions that you all have um, for either, you know, about the TRIO programs that were spoken about today, um, DSPS and ACE, maybe that app that was shared today or even the SOAR process. If you have any questions about those um, items or maybe even anything Shibo related, um, we could, you know, try to um, answer your questions that you have there. We do have one question. Do you want to say it out loud or should sure. I? Could you be in both, both of the programs? Could you be in both of the programs? You get a whole bunch of noise. Absolutely. Yes. Any other questions? So for these particular programs, you can. When we start talking about some of the learning communities, um, specifically like Emoja, Puente, um, Movement, and SIN, um, you could be in these programs and one of those, but you can't be in multiple of those programs, the learning communities and, and FYE is also, also in there. And that's because they have classes that are attached to their programs and then the classes will conflict. But you could be in one learning community and multiple programs, okay? So that, that's the difference between learning community and special programs that we'll be going over in the next couple of weeks. So it'll be good for you all to go to those in the room, so you might have to choose only one learning community, but then you could be in TRIO and DSPS at the same time, okay? Yeah. So um, I just wanted to kind of point that out because um, you might be like, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and join FYE and Emoja then. Um, in that situation, you can't, but in terms of these support programs, the special programs, you could be in multiple programs. The learning communities, and I'll distinguish them as we get go by them, will mention that, you, you know, you can only be in this program and you know another combination. But for these two that we spoke about today, you saw the heads up and the nods from the directors. So if <laughs> if you come and they say otherwise, like, hey, I went to your presentation, you said that could be in both. But now you could be in both of these. Um, any other questions for folks in the room? And you know what? Any question, it doesn't even have to be completely related to these two. Um, you know, that we talked about today, because we have a wealth of knowledge in the room right now. So, um, or even from Masuki, if you had a question. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot, you don't have to. <laughs> so I'm multitasking here. Um, I have you guys on the smart board. And so I can't speak without the echo. So I have to like play around with it a wee bit. So thank you for your patience. Um, I do want to say that um, we do have a lot of kids and it's every Monday in March that we're presenting um, some sort of special program at um, Chabot College. I urge you to come to all of those because it's not the same program. And there's a lot out there. So you guys will get information about um, how to join those programs along with these programs. And I will be emailing these to you. So I have got the sign up, um, Mr. Allen, or Alan, I'm gonna email it to you so you have access to it as well. Um, this website, the website that I'm gonna share with you via email, and I'm gonna share with you instructors. It's awesome because it shows you the schedule. It tells you what's happening next week. We've got the emoji and first year experience. Um, those, all, all these programs are there, not as extra work, but it's gonna make your work easier with the transition over to Chabot and then your, pro, you know, your time at Chabot. It's going to make you go faster. If you're looking at transferring over, it's going to help you. You saw how many counselors each individual program has. Those are your counselors. You bug them. They're there to be bugged. So, you know, this is your way to rub shoulders with people at Chabot, get the information you need. Am I missing anything, Alan? 
Anyone else? That, I think that's a good thing you bring up, uh, Ms. Suki, is, is the counselor piece um, that all these different programs will have you know, available to you because in all honesty, you can, you can elect to not be in a program. So let me say that. Yes. You can do what I did <laughs> back in the days and try to figure it out on your own. And then sometimes trying to see a counselor could take months, right? Um, and you heard from Ying Ying, she was able to see a counselor almost every week. So, so being in the program, um, I don't know if I was echoing, but like not being in a program, it's harder to see a counselor, not that you can't, but being in one of our programs or multiple programs, you have access to talking to a counselor about your academic plans or changes that you may have, like maybe you change your major. You could see someone right away and then you could already have a plan for next semester, right? So, um, so I, I'm glad, Ms. Suki, you brought that up, that, that the, counsel the counseling piece is really a big thing for these programs. Um, one of the big things, they offer a lot, each one of uh, the programs, but I wanted to, you know, put a asterisk and star and heart around <laughs> that piece of having counselors available to you. And then it was great to see that each program has at least five, four to five um, counselors um, that you could, um, you know, walk in and talk to. The Go other ahead, piece, um, um, Alan, is that we have very unique process. Um, Nathaniel and EOPS register earlier than anybody else in campus. We call it priority mm -hmm. registration. Ying Ying said it a little bit. We register a day after they register. So we're still ahead of the game from the other 13,000 students that are not in our programs. So when we say that you are going to transfer very quickly, it means that if you keep on track, you can get out as quickly as possible from Chabot College and transferring out or completing all your, all your requirements because you will not miss a class. You will not be in the wait list to try to get into the class because you'll be the first one to be able to register for those classes. So again, these are the very unique support services and resources that special programs and some of these programs offer for you to be successful. I had one more comment, more like on the bigger picture of things. Um, you know, being here in, in Hayward and being with Chabot as your local college, that's an advantage. We are a, a state leader in terms of special programs. Uh, Puente was started here. We have an amazing and rich history. And, you know, sometimes community colleges can get a bad rap. People have a certain idea of them. Those are wrong. Um, I am a product of community college. I went to Dabo Valley. Um, I also went to Stanford for my BA. I would love to have had more time at Stanford, but I would not trade the time that I spent at Dabo Valley. Community college is a time when you can create community and friendships and family that are, is not going to be the same at a four-year institution. So take advantage of your community college. It is definitely worth the time and investment to do so. Wow. Thanks for sharing that, Nathaniel. I didn't know about your, your history of education, how you got from community college to Stanford. That's great to know. Um, so students, um, just here's the quick um, schedule of the upcoming weeks. I know we only have like a couple of minutes left, but next week, March 14th, we're gonna have Amoja and first year experience. This site's gonna be shared with you and you could technically click on this. It's also on step five of the SOAR steps. Um, uh, but yeah, so next week, Emotion First Year Experience, March 21st, Change It Now, and Movement, which is our new Asian American and Pacific Islander learning community. Uh, March 28th, Cal Fresh Guardian Scholars, Cal Works in EOPS. And then our final presentation is on April 18th with Puente and Athletics. So if any of you are athletes, um, or want to join Puente, you might know about Puente at your high school. We also have it at Chabot. And as Nathaniel brought up, we have a history with our Puente being um, the first, you know, um, at Chabot College. So, so these are our upcoming presentations. Please join us. 
And um, yes, thanks for, for having us and sharing your time, being here, being present. And we would love to see you at Chabot and be in one of our programs, if not more than one of our programs. So thank you all for everyone in the room there. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. It was very, very helpful. They, they've got a bus to catch, so they're heading out. Um, all right, take care, everyone. Bye, guys, say goodbye. Bye. Uh, see you guys next Monday. Yeah, to get over to a meeting, oh, uh, in-person meeting, so I got to run.